This strapping young lad is Tristan Barnett, and he makes knives. He makes knives out of all kinds of stuff. Old tools, bed frames, car bumpers. If it's a hunk of metal, he'll make it into a knife. And I like that creativity. I like his style. And if you peruse the plethora of videos that he posts, you might get a glimpse of his murder wall. He's even got the cleaver from the zombie in Hero Quest. In this series, I'll be showing off my very own collection of Tristan Barnett's original works. This is Tristan Barnett's Wonderful Creations, and I'm your host, JJ Jinx! Stay sharp! Welcome back to another episode of Tristan Barnett's Wonderful Creations. Yes, I'm still doing these. <laughs> So recently, my girlfriend was in and out of the hospital. A little tired because uh, I went septic three times in one month uh, because of a little crap uh, kidney stone. And I wanted to get her a gift. You know, a, oh, welcome back to um, having a functional body. Here's a gift kind of gift. <laughs> I thought about getting flowers, but eh, too cliche. And I couldn't really find a Hallmark card with that exact sentiment. So, I did the right thing. I ordered some knives from Tristan Barnett. So he writes, hope you enjoy this package. And I did a little extra for you because your boyfriend, JJ Jinx, told me about your painful kidney stones. So I built you the most badass knife. <laughs> I've ever built. Oh my goodness. You <laughs> too, JJ. Hope you enjoy your friend TV knives. Uh, Tristan's a generous guy. He threw in a whole bunch of extras. So in exchange for a buck knife that he wanted and a care package that I sent him, uh, he sent me these. I'm going to start with a bag of miscellaneous stuff that he gave to me. First up, we have this little knife. It's a little boxy deal with some kind of um, animal bone with some burnt jigging going on. This is made by Whitetail Cutlery, which is based, I think, in Florida, or at least it was, because it has since been bought by Frost Cutlery. Now everything's made in China, and uh, it's Frost Cutlery. But they kind of do these classic uh, slip joint folders. This one happens to have two blades, the main blade, has the whitetail cutlery symbol stamped into it. It's a bit small, so it might be hard to see, but it's basically just a, a deer with its antlers. And on the other side, you got a smaller little pen blade. It's stamped on the other side of the main blade. It says German stainless rust free. So I guess that's uh, the kind of steel it is, although the knife itself is made in Pakistan. I just said they were made in China. My mistake. <laughs> This next one's kind of unique to me. It's um, kind of a toothpick knife, although it also resembles that um, uh, Spanish style knife where the end of it kind of flares up. Um, it's very slender and long. <laughs> There's no thumb nick, I'm not sure if there ever was one, but uh, the, yeah, the blade is um, nicely polished, very sharp. And you even got a little sharpening choil down there. I like the look of the brass and the dark wood inlay. And you can tell it's kind of old because it does have some corrosion of the brass in there. Don't know where it was made. I don't know anything about this knife, but it's kind of cool. <laughs> long slip joint. This next one is interesting for a couple of reasons. Uh, first glance, it looks like one of those cheap plasticky knives that you can get at a gas station. And you would be correct. This is made by Maxam. I do own a bunch of things by Maxam and that's exactly, a good, <laughs> that's a good description of the kind of stuff they make. 
but some of the stuff they make is kind of cool at the same time. Uh, there's nothing too extraordinary about this knife, except uh, it's manufactured in China, but with Japanese steel. I can tell some work has been done on the edge of this knife because the bevel's a little bit uneven, but somebody took care of it. It's also got quite a bit of play, <laughs> but there's nothing you can really do about it because it's all riveted construction. Now, the nice thing about that is when one of these all riveted knives uh, with a back lock gets really loose, it suddenly has drop shot action. I dig it. This next one is a Victorinox knockoff. I remember seeing these when I was a kid in uh, Dollar General. That's just like a, a cheap store in the U.S. And uh, it, I think they were like two bucks. They also sold knockoff classic SDs for one dollar. But that was back in the 90s. This one has a compass. The uh, accoutrements are pretty standard. And I can tell... Uh, Excuse me. This thing is well used. The springs feel quite worn and they're not so springy. But uh, you got a fish scaler that looks like it's got quite a bit of pitting on it. Now, I don't know if that was there from the manufacturing or if Tristan cleaned it up before he sent it over. I just don't know. Uh, it's got the toothpick still and it's got the tweezers still. The Phillips said screwdriver is kind of bent a little bit. Yeah, we've all been there. <laughs> the saw kind of looks interesting. Like, it's very roughly ground, unlike the other tools. I am not sure what that's about. Kind of neat they put a compass right there, though. Next one is one of those combination three-in-one knives that uh, I've seen a couple of times before. My friends and I down in Florida got one out of a Bud K mystery box, um, and it was pretty hard to open and close and kind of dangerous in that way. <laughs> this one's got a neat um, kind of a cracked mud sort of pattern in it that I kind of like. You got these uh, plastic half thumb disc things to open the drop point blade. It's a little bit beat up, but um, yeah, when you have that black coated finish, the little nicks and scratches get accentuated, which could be a good look for some knives. On the other side, you have kind of a strange looking blade um, to me. It's half serrated and then the edge swoops up like this and it's got a gut hook. Now the game processing multi-tool knives that I've seen, uh, it has, they usually have a, you know, some kind of a, a drop point or clip point blade and some kind of a gut hook blade. But this one also features a, kind of a hawkbill saw. I guess it's like a bone saw, which is the third piece that I usually see featured in these kinds of processing knives. but. I don't think I've seen it with a hawkbill saw before. Matter of fact, I don't think I've ever seen a hawkbill saw. <laughs> it's pretty cool looking though. Now the outer two knives have these uh, back lock releases that you, you push in and it releases the blade like so. But the center hawkbill saw is a simple slip joint and it's very loose. This thing kind of feels like it has been used. Hmm, what kind of game has Tristan been processing, I wonder? Can I lift some human DNA out of this? Maybe it's best not to ask these questions. This next knife came with a note. This is from my personal collection of switchblades. 
This one has cracked scales. That's why I didn't want it anymore. Hope you enjoy it. You guys can flip a coin to see who gets it. Your friend, TB Knives. I, I, I do like it, but that is your favorite blue. I, I think you get it. And uh, I guess that's gonna be Tristan's TB Knives symbol at some point. So you saw it here first, folks. Tristan, uh, don't give me a copyright infringement after you become famous for this video. But if you do, I would understand. So here's Tristan pawning off his old junk on me. <laughs> no, seriously, I feel honored having a piece that was in your personal collection. I know that uh, Tristan's very much into Italian style stilettos. This one has a very loose safety, um, which could be on purpose, you know, it works. It's just, you know, <laughs> loose. These scales are pretty cool though. I think this is like a, an acrylic blue and white swirly kind of deal. Uh, might not come out on the camera too well, but if you stare into it long enough, you begin to see that it has a three dimensionality to it within the swirls. That's pretty cool. And here you can see some of the cracking he was talking about, right where the pins are on both sides up here at the hilt. Nothing you can really do about it unless you knock the pins out, uh, rebind the acrylic pieces, and then pin it back together and hope you don't crack it again. Probably not gonna happen. Your best bet is to glue it as it is, which looks like somebody has done, but it has varying degrees of success. I'll just be careful with this one and try to keep it intact. The blade is about as long as the handle. This thing is huge. But yeah, it's a push button switch blade. Oh, I gotta be careful where I point this thing. <laughs> it is made in Italy by a company called uh, AKC. And uh, that's appropriate because these are Italian by design and it's the first Italian stiletto that I actually own, which is kind of interesting because I have a lot of the other classic style knives. I've got a Mercator, I've got a Higo no Kami, I have a Duk Duk. Um, I never got one of these though, and I'm just not that into them. I have one that's similar in size. Let me get it. This one's made by Kissing Crane, and you can see that it's nearly identical in you know, dimensions um, and shapes and things. Difference is that the uh, scale material is animal horn, which is very roughly hewn. That's one thing I don't really like about this. There's an asymmetry to it. And this is really thick here. Uh, blade style is a little different, but uh, this German made stiletto has a cool backstory to it, but you'll have to see that in a different video. I'll link down below. But unlike this one, it is not automatic. It has a back lock. So, closing one of these, the guard up here kind of swivels and pushes the blade up. Oop, gotta go the other way. And the blade very nicely locks shut. So those are the knives that he just kind of tossed in as a extra. So who am I to complain about any of it really? The next few knives I've shown you are the ones that were custom made by him. And I'm gonna premise that segment of this video by saying he is getting a lot better. His fit and finish have noticeable improvements over his past works. Let me show you. I'm going to start off with this one, which comes with a custom sheath. <laughs> ah, just kidding. Piece of foam for shipping. But here we go back to one of his old school materials, bed frame. And what we've got is a handle that's made out of stacked leather and plastic, which has been shaped. This is, you know, stacked leather style. He's been starting to do this, and um, I think it looks great. How pretty is that? Brass hardware with an aluminum hilt. Looking at the blade, I can detect a slight recurve here, but what I really wanted to show you in terms of how much better his skills have gotten is look at the evenness of this grind. 
if you look at where the uh, the white light reflects and then the angle changes towards the edge, that is very well done across the entire length of the cutting edge. And then the, the secondary grind, same thing. Harder to see, but very, very even. Well, up until this point. But that's when the curvature begins. That's, that's, the, that's the tricky part. This is impressive craftsmanship. I like that the pommel is a brass nut. And there's kind of a rat tail style tang with a pin that goes through it at the very bottom through that nut. Surely one of his finest pieces. This next one is made from a file so that when you pull it out of its uh, foam, it makes a cool noise. <laughs> this is another example of just how refined his technique has become. So as I said, the blade is made from a file, brass hardware again. Here you can see one of those pieces of blue plastic as a spacer. And then the handle is this perfectly sized and shaped bone. Not sure what the source of this bone is, but I will not ask questions. It's been shaped and coated with some kind of lacquer. And it's a perfect size for my hand. And I really like the slenderness of this blade. You get that knurling and pitting from the file, which I think looks cool. And again, check out the grind. Superbly well done. Especially for something so thick, that grind is nice and even. And the bevel looks great. I mean, there's a little bit of a discrepancy here, but that's it. All the way out to the edge. Tristan Barnett, you're going places. This last piece comes with an accessory. Oh, this one's for me. Oh my God. Oh, this is gorgeous. Look at that. I put in my little beam. <laughs> oh, that is so badass. So my girlfriend's uh, childhood nickname is Tiger. So Tristan made for her a wood stand and uh, integrated some shotgun shells uh, where you can you know, display the knife using this thing. <laughs> this was really, really cool. Uh, what a neat idea. These are the kinds of unique things that I actively encourage Tristan to make and do. Although, I mean, he came up with the idea for this one on his own, but I was like, fuck yeah, more like this. man five nuts and five bolts the spikes cherry wood oh my god i i can't oh my god cherry wood for the handle 12 gauge shotgun shells for the cap and the panel oh oh this is gonna be good wow <laughs> it's not French. <laughs> well, looking at the blade, I believe this was also made from bed frame, but there is um, this black accent that he's put into it. There's uh, his initials down there, TB, kind of a sawtooth looking back, just for looks. Uh, you know, I asked him to design something that he thinks my girlfriend would like, and she likes stuff like this. Oh, this is epic. Man, when you compare this kind of stuff to the things I got from him, you know, years ago, it's just so much better. He's gotten a lot of practice. Anyway, uh, the handle is painted wood. We have another <laughs> shotgun shell for the pommel, but the highlight of this knife is the guard, which has these spiky screws put through it. 
yeah, that's, you know. Wow, this is like definite, like, a survival apocalypse thing. Kind of reminds me of like the World War I trench knife, but more post-apocalyptic. <laughs> But I am glad he thought ahead. He knows how dangerous I could be to myself. Also wanted to point out the guard, which has these bent ends on the uh, metal piece. These little refinements here and there, you know, attention to detail. I think it's great. <laughs> I think Tristan's going places. If he were to somehow land a job in like a machine shop, working with a mill and a lathe, kind of get more practice, refine his skills, open up his toolbox, so to speak, he could be the next Lynn Thompson. Or maybe in a Willy Wonka-esque zany series of events, he could be the next Jim Frost and bring that company back to glory. You never know. Now you gotta hold up a knife and say, stay sharp. Oh, goodness. All right, <laughs> hold on. Stay sharp. <laughs> Is that gonna be our thumbnail? <laughs>